Welcome back, everyone. It is Shimon Busy with AFFCNY's pre-conference interview series, giving you information about this year's workshop presenters and what they're going to be speaking about. So the next workshop title is Adolescent Adoptive Relationships, Addressing Loss and Building Attachment. Let's see what this speaker is going to be chatting about. Again, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. We have our next workshop presenter. Amy, why don't you take a second and introduce yourself and maybe tell them a little bit of how you're connected to the adoption and foster care community. Sure, great. So I'm Amy Geller. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in the state of New Jersey. Um, and I have a background actually in medical social work, hospital social work, and hospice care. 12 years ago, I opened my own private practice and had really no intention of working with adoptees, um, but that is who kept calling my office. Um, I just kept getting referral after referral of adolescent adoptees, and as an adoptee myself, I found this really curious and interesting, um, and that's sort of how I began the journey working in a specialty with adoptive families um, and people impacted by adoption. Um, so since that time, I have really worked on developing expertise in that area. And I'm currently um, pursuing a doctorate degree at Rutgers University, so it's School of Social Work, where I am completely focusing my academic pursuit on studies um, around adoption. So I see, um, as I'm reading some um, information on your bio, um, <laughs> You, you just said that your interest and expertise is coming from all those calls that you were doing, but it, it's difficult to make the switch when you're, did it take a little while for you to get that? How did you get your expertise in it? Because it's going to take a big switch because if you went from the medical background to focusing on adolescence with a background as an adoptee, you kind of had to learn how to do that. How did you make that switch? So I've always been interested in family therapy and did a lot of training on that, which was, of course, useful, particularly in hospice care, um, and did a lot of preparation before I became a private practitioner, um, was a social worker for many, many years before I decided to open my office. Um, and so really, I began with an interest in working with adolescents and um, wanting to provide care that centered the needs of that age group. And um, it seemed to me that there were many issues surrounding adolescence and adoption in particular. Um, and so the more referrals that were coming my way, the more I saw it, trainings and education and read up on it. And it was also really, you know, I have a, a, a a story that kind of involves my own personal, like looking into the ways that being an adoptee had impacted me. And so it was sort of like this melding of like my personal and my professional um, story sort of coming together. Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing that. I see that, you know, through this journey of you learning how to support them um, in your, in your work, it's, you're also, um, educating on mental health in school communities. A lot of uh, what we do as an organization is supporting the younger in a school environment um, because they're not getting the support that they, what, that they need. Um, what kind of things do you feel is important for school communities to know about this, uh, our community as a, as a family? I really, one of the ways that I have um, found really useful in working with families, particularly with adolescents, is to get involved and build a team around not only the adoptee, but the family. Um, and so it's really about connecting with systems, right? Connecting with schools, connecting with physicians, pediatricians, um, other, you know, mental health uh, or, or other ancillary support services. And, um, Oftentimes, I will go to school and, and sit in on IEP meetings. Um, there's just so much that everyone who works with students can learn about the unique needs of adoptees and their families. Um, 
And we know that adoptees are overrepresented, right, in, in schools with, with IEPs. Um, so it's just really about, I, I find most people that I work with are really open and they want to learn um, how to support the students that they work with. So it's really about sort of not siloing in our own offices or in our own mental health agencies and sort of bridging systems together. It's interesting how our, I mean, this is why your topic fits our uh, theme this year about connections. Um, I also see, so is it, please correct me if I'm wrong. So part of your doctorate, you're doing a study, um, the expert, um, I'm sorry, the experience of adult adoptees in psychotherapy. What exactly, what brought you to choose that topic as your study? So we tend to think sort of in the narrative of adoption, um, we think of, when we think of adoptees, we think mostly of children or adolescents, right? And adoptees grow up and become adopted adults. And many that I work with will often tell me I've gone to two or three or four therapists before I felt like someone really understood what I was talking about. And so I wanted to do a qualitative study and I interviewing adult adoptees specifically about their experience to really center the adoptee voices in the research and say, what are we doing right? What do we need to work on? And what's it like for you, you know, beyond going to therapy, maybe when you're a child or a teenager, but now you're an adult and you are pursuing therapy for yourself. You know, it's long been established. We know adoption is a lifelong experience. And so it's important to me to bring information and awareness about you know, the needs of older adoptees. So let's, let's uh, talk about the topic that you chose and how it fit into our wonderful theme this year. And it's adolescent adoptive relationships, addressing loss and building attachment. Tell everybody a little bit um, of what you're going to be speaking about. So this is one of my favorite topics. Um, I, I, was always very interested in, in the area of loss, particularly coming from my background in hospice. And as I was working with adolescents, I started to realize that the work was focusing on the behaviors of the adolescents, teenagers, um, and that often there was a conflict or a area of tension between specifically the adoptee and their adoptive mother. And I'm going to talk about in my presentation about why I believe that that occurs. Um, and using the theory of Pauline Boss, ambiguous loss, which is really one that does not pathologize any of this process, but actually normalizes that loss is a part of every adoption story. Um, and so I started to shift my work using Pauline Boss's work towards a more relational, bringing families into the room together, um, you know, finding empathic connections so that everybody involved can sort of build that attachment that I think everybody is looking for, right? I think, I think most families have the same goals and that is to have, you know, safe, loving, bonded attachment. How is this a topic that would be advantageous for the community to be able to hear of all, all, all of us in the community, all of the triad and others. Why is this so important? Well, I think it's important because rather than saying, my child is struggling, please help my child. I'm asking families to say, we are struggling as a family, help us as a family. And really, I am empowering, particularly adoptive moms who often will talk about the difficulty in their relationships with, with their adopted children. Um, I'm inviting them to come into their room with their experience about what was happening for you before the decision to adopt um, and, and, and welcoming that part of you without judgment, with complete you know, acceptance. And believe it or not, most of the relationships will benefit when they're willing to come in and be vulnerable themselves, right? It goes back to that Brene Brown, like vulnerability, like being will willing to like get down in the hole with each other. And so it actually, rather than have separating the relationship, it's, 
it's saying, let's get in here and roll up our sleeves. And rather than looking at diagnoses, pathologies, what needs to be fixed, it's more centered on what is the story of our family? What pieces have we not filled in? I do like a family tree, like that really tells the whole story. And it's so powerful to see connections being made from a place of positivity, right? I mean, that's it. Like we grow when we feel safe. We grow when we feel listened to and anger, um, you know, punishment, all of those things sort of actually shut down these courageous conversations. 